Saturday, December 1st, 5 a.m. Mountain Time, 2018. Guys, in this video, we're going to check out the New England Seamounts, and I want you to stick with me on this video because it goes back to a magma plume that they've discovered underneath New England, and it led me to these New England Seamounts. And it's not so much uh, the plume and the seamounts and all that, because that's going to take many, many years for that to ever come to pass. But what I found off of the coast of New York, New England, was quite impressive. In fact, so impressive, I didn't even know that these things could get this big. Let me show you how big here in just a second. But first, hot spots and cool volcanoes. If you drain the water from the ocean basin, some of the most dramatic features you would see are groups or lines of underwater volcanoes called seamounts, sometimes in clusters and other times uh, stretching across the ocean basin for many miles. Perhaps best known is the Hawaiian Islands, Emperor Seamount chain that stretches over 6,000 kilometers from Hawaii up to near the Aleutian Islands west of Alaska. But there are also seamount chains in the Atlantic Ocean, including the New England seamounts. How do these chains of volcanoes form? In some places on Earth, even beneath the middle of the tectonic plates, isolated plumes of hot material rise up from the deep within the mantle. Sound familiar? That's what they discovered underneath New England, a 250-mile-wide plume of molten rock rising up underneath Vermont, New Hampshire, and Massachusetts. That's what led me to this area. But anyway, there are about 25 large volcanoes that make up the New England seamounts over a distance of about 1,200 kilometers. It's around 700 miles long. And they get younger towards the east. They move from kind of like the northwest to the southeast. And I want to show you what I ran across. And... I just simply couldn't believe how big some of these volcanoes were. Just huge. Check this out. So we are going to New England Seamounts. Here's some stuff on Wikipedia about them. They're off the coast of New York, New England, right out through here. And this plume is coming up right underneath this area here in New England. And that's the plume that they discovered just a few months back. And it's kind of got the same type of a geographic setup as Yellowstone, and it's flanked with the Cascade volcanoes. You've got this plume coming up that someday could be, I suppose, a supervolcano in this area. If these are still around, it's flanked with volcanoes to the right. These volcanoes are in a league all their own. Check this out. Uh, let me get to Google Earth. Where is Google Earth? Google Earth is right here. This is where the plume's at. It's coming up underneath this part of the earth right here, 250 miles wide. Here's this volcanic chain. They're called sea mounts. If they were on land, they would be Mount Kelvin. This would be Mount Atlantis, Mount Gosnold. Um, these things are huge. They don't look like it from high above, do they? Don't really look all that big. Wait just a minute. We're going to measure... Kelvin Seamount. This was once an active volcano, okay? And with this hot plume rising over here into this area, makes you wonder if it's going to infiltrate this plumbing that's been here because these volcanoes were active many, many years ago in this area and they've been migrating to the southeast. So they may still be um, attached to that area with some underground plumbing, but that's not what I want to talk about. Look at the size of these things. And I'm going to put this into perspective that's kind of mind-bending. Okay, um, Kelvin Seamount. Let's measure just the width of this thing from side to side. 41 miles wide. And that's one volcano. Look at the profile of this thing. And there you have it. Clearly a volcano, right? 16,000 at the seafloor and change goes up to the peak of this volcano, 5,400. So that's an 11,000 foot peak at the top of this volcano, a little over two miles. And this is one of many. 
And this one's actually even bigger. It's 47 miles wide, 11 miles tall. The tops of these things are kind of smooth. And what I've read is that means that these were once above water years ago. They were above water. Can you imagine if that thing was on land? 40 miles wide. It's unbelievably big. So big that it could contain this here. You could take the entire city, downtown city of Chicago, all the buildings, all the suburbs, all the homes. You could even take the freeways, uh, people, put them on that volcano quite comfortably with room to spare. That's how big that thing is. That is incredible. I had no idea. I knew they were there. I just didn't know they were that big. And I'd always looked at the Cascades, looked at Mount Shasta, looked at, of course, Mount Rainier, which is still an active volcano. Um, these are kind of, eh, they say possibly active. But here's a look at some of these, and they're big volcanoes in their own right. This is Shasta. It's six miles wide, just to kind of give you a perspective, 14,000 feet tall. In fact, here's another look at Shasta. And if you look at Shasta compared to Mount Kelvin, they look very similar, except uh, Kelvin's much, much bigger, about five times as wide, six times as wide. In fact, I've got a picture right there. They look very, very similar. It's just much smaller. This thing here is huge. So like I said, once again, this is just kind of a video for fun, just to compare volcano sizes. Again, I had no idea these things could get this big. This one over here, um, it's kind of maybe got two, possibly three, but overall width, 47 miles wide. Once again, you could set the entire city of Chicago and the suburbs on this one and this one, each with room to spare. Absolutely incredible. I thought you guys might find that interesting. Thanks for watching, guys. Have a super day, and be safe out there.